Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video we are going to talk about upset prevention and recovery. We'll focus on the recovery aspect though, since upset prevention is something that's rather difficult to achieve in most of the situations leading to an airplane upset in flight simulation. I'm mainly thinking about autopilots acting up or weather engines acting up in your simulator here. Now, that said, nonetheless, it is important to know how to actually get out of those, as they are rather common scenarios in uh, flight simulation. So, let's actually go into some of the details as to what an upset actually is. Historically, an upset has been defined as un unintentionally, note the word unintentionally, exceeding any one or more of the following conditions. Pitch attitude greater than 25 degrees nose up, pitch attitude greater than 10 degrees nose down, bank angle greater than 45 degrees, and anything less than the above parameters, but flying at an airspeed inappropriate for the conditions. So for example, if you're pitching 20 degrees up, but you're only flying 120 knots, that can be recognized as an airplane upset as well. There is a great manual available from ICAO on uh, airplane upset prevention and recovery training. That's actually called the Airplane Upset and Re Recovery uh, Training 8 by ICAO, which I'm going to link to in the video description below. And if you really want to extend your knowledge on this topic, I can very much recommend you to read through this manual as I can impossibly cover all the aspects in a video like this. Finally, before we start, please be aware that my videos are designed as tools to entertain yourself for Microsoft Flight Simulator or other desktop flight simulators and are not designed for real-life pilot training. So if you're a real pilot, then feel free to entertain yourself with this. But for your actual professional standards, please refer to your operator's manuals and training. So, if an upset situation is recognized, immediately accomplish the upset recovery maneuver that's found in the 737's quick reference handbook. It's basically possible to summarize airplane upset recovery maneuvers into two basic scenarios. The one is nose high and the other nose low. And in each of the two, we'll have to distinguish between whether you are wings level or whether you have a bank angle. Now, I'm going to go into these in a moment. And we have to add one more scenario to the above, and that's the stall recovery. So in all upset situations, it's necessary to recover from a stall before applying any other recovery actions. And if you're looking for more information on the stall, please actually have a look into my stall recovery video. Now, let's head on into the upset prevention. We can distinguish three different levels of energy of your airplane. For all three scenarios, we are assuming the same indicated airspeed. In one scenario, we have an airplane flying at flight level 300. In the second scenario, we have an airplane flying at level 150. And in the third scenario, we'll have the airplane flying at 3000 feet above the ground. Now, in which situation does the airplane have most energy? In the first, flying at the high altitude. The kinetic energy of the airplane is the same in all scenarios, but the altitude gives us potential energy that we can convert into kinetic energy if we need to. To put this in simple terms, if you're at high altitude, you simply have to push the nose down to gain airspeed. It's simple as that. Now, of course, if we have an airplane having the highest energy, we're also in the best situation to start an upset recovery. And 
In the second scenario, with the airplane at flight level 150, we have a mediumish energy, and in the third scenario, we have a low energy. Now, let's actually start. The first condition that we're going to talk about is a nose high wings level upset. And if the, if the airplane pitch attitude is unintentionally so high, then the airspeed is going to be decreasing rapidly. Now remember my stall recovery video where I told you that at any airspeed we can prevent a stall by pushing the nose down and thereby reducing g-forces. At zero g the airplane stall speed is going to be zero knots. However, if the speed is reducing rapidly we are also rapidly reducing the elevator authority, meaning that the slower the airplane is, the less effective our elevator becomes. And that means that in certain scenarios where we have a high pitch and a low airspeed, the elevator may not be strong enough to bring the nose back down. You are allowed to use stabilizer trim as needed, to reduce your pitch, but be aware that it is very easy to actually make the situation worse by making excessive use of pitch trim. And that can actually result in either aggravating the upset, loss of control, or very high structural load that can exceed your airplane's load limits. So. It would be intuitive for a pilot to increase thrust when your speed is decreasing, right? Well, right. But consider the following. The 737's engine are mounted under the wing and therefore below the center of gravity of the airplane. That means that when you already have troubles getting your nose down, increasing thrust can actually lead to an even worse situation because the nose might come up even higher. Therefore, it is permissible to reduce thrust in, air, in order to control the airplane's pitch attitude. The 737's wing is designed that it is going to stall at the wing root first. And since it is a swept wing, that means that the nose is naturally going to come down in case the wing is stalling. So consider reducing your thrust in order to reduce your pitch if needed. However, it is perfectly possible to roll your airplane to a side to get the nose down. So if you have difficulties getting your nose down, consider rolling the airplane to anything between 45 degrees and 60 degrees of bank, as that is going to reduce your vertical component of the lift that's acting on the airplane and therefore the nose is going to start coming down. So to recap, if normal pitch control inputs do not stop an increasing pitch rate, rolling the airplane through bank angle that starts the nose down should work. Bank angles of about 45 degrees up to a maximum of 60 degrees could be needed. It is important in this situation that you unload the wing as in reduce the G-loads by applying up to full nose down elevator and that should make your roll controls more effective as well. And with airspeeds as low as sticks shaker on set, normal roll controls, which means up to full deflection of the ailerons and spoilers, can be used by the pilots. Try however not to reduce your rudder too much, because that's bears the risk of actually inducing a spin should your airplane stall at about the same time. Now, the second condition that we're looking at is a nose high, high bank angle upset. Now, the high bank angle, uh, sorry, the nose high, high bank angle upset requires deliberate flight control inputs and the large bank angle can actually be helpful in reducing the excessive pitch attitude as we've just discussed on the recovery of the uh, nose high upset. So applying full 
oh sorry, applying up to full nose down elevator and adjusting the bank angle to achieve the desired rate of pitch reduction while considering your energy management is the way to go in a nose high, high bank angle upset. Only once the pitch attitude has been reduced to the, de to the desired level, it is necessary uh, to reduce the bank angle to ensure sufficient airspeed has been achieved and return the airplane to level flight. Now, this set, let's quickly look at the nose high recovery upset procedure. The pilot monitoring is going to call out attitude, speed and altitude throughout the recovery should they become relevant and he's going to verify that the pilot flying has completed all actions and is going to call out any continued deviation. Now let's go to the pilot flying maneuver. Disconnect autopilot, disconnect auto throttle. To recover apply nose down elevator and apply as much elevator as is needed up to full down input to obtain a nose down pitch rate. Consider applying nose down stabilizer trim as needed to achieve the pitch down rate. Reduce the thrust and roll adjust bank angle to obtain a nose down pitch rate. To complete the recovery when approaching the horizon roll to wings level Check airspeed and adjust thrust and establish a proper pitch attitude. That completes the nose high recovery technique. Now from here let's go on to the nose down recovery. So first of all, nose low, wings level. If the pitch attitude is unintentionally low, the airspeed can be increasing rapidly. Now, a pilot would likely reduce the thrust and extend the speed brake to correct for this condition. However, thrust reduction is going to cause an additional nose down pitching moment. And while, uh, sorry, and while extending the speed brake causes a nose up pitching moment, it also causes an increase in drag and a decrease in lift for the same angle of attack. If you are at speeds that are well above the maximum operating speed or Mach number, the ability to command the pitch up rate with the elevator may be reduced because the, of the extreme aerodynamic loads on the elevator. Again, it is necessary to maneuver the airplane's flight path back towards the horizon, and at moderate pitch attitudes applying nose up elevator, reducing thrust and extending the speed brakes as necessary to change the pitch attitude to a desired range have to be done. At extremely low pitch attitudes and high airspeeds that are well above the maximum speed, nose-up elevator and nose-up trim may be required to establish a nose-up pitch rate. However, be careful if you're doing this of not pulling too strong because you can very easily exceed the airplane's load limits at 2.5 Gs. Above that, your structural load integrity is in danger, so while you do have to apply a positive correction, be careful that you're not overcorrecting and therefore risking the aircraft's structural integrity. Now, the second situation we have is a nose low high bank angle upset. And the nose low high bank angle upset requires prompt action by the pilot as altitude is rapidly being exchanged into airspeed. So even if the airplane is at a high enough altitude that ground impact is not an immediate concern, airspeed can rapidly increase beyond the airplane's design limits. So, I told you earlier on that pulling on the control column is going to increase your g-forces. And you have to be aware that the more bank angle you have, the stronger the g-forces are to maintain level flight. That means that with a nose low high bank angle upset, it's imperative that we are going to roll the wings level and then apply our elevator. And be aware that you should increase your um, speed brakes as much as needed in order to keep the speed under control. However, do not extend the speed brakes beyond the flight detent. So, this concludes the four common upset scenarios. One last scenario we quickly have to talk about is high bank angles, but that's just a little bit of theory for you to keep in mind. So if the airplane is banked, so if it's not a zero angle of bank, the lift created by the wings is not being fully applied against gravity, 
and more than 1G is required to maintain level flight. To give you some examples, at 30 degrees angle of bank to maintain level flight you need about 1.3 Gs. At 60 degrees you need 2 Gs. And from 67 degrees onwards, level flight cannot be maintained within the AFM load factor limits. So from 67 degrees angle of bank you cannot maintain level flight without exceeding airplane structural limits. Keep that in mind for the recovery situation. This set, let's actually get into the recovery techniques for the nose low recovery. And that is disengage autopilot and auto throttle. And to, if needed, recover from a stall. Then roll in the shortest direction to wings level. And if the bank angle is more than 90 degrees, first unload the airplane. So push forward on the control column and then start rolling back towards wings level. To complete the recovery, apply nose up elevator, apply nose up trim if needed, and adjust thrust and drag as needed. Now all of the set, I'm going to give you some examples here on how to recover some upsets. So let's unpause our simulator. And the way we normally do this in the real full flight simulators, in the level D simulators, is that the instructor is going to tell the pilot to close his eyes. And then at some point, eventually he's going to say recover. Then the pilot will have to open his eyes, recognize which upset you're in, and then apply the correct upset recovery procedure. So luckily here on YouTube, I can simply cut the video to make this a little bit simpler for you. So let me unpause this flight and bring the airplane into an upset condition. In that upset, I am going to pause the simulator so that you will have a little bit of time to think about what you would do before I'm going to start showing you what the correct recovery procedure would be. So, that's that. Let's go. All right, here we are. Recover. So, obviously, in this situation, we are in a nose high, high bank angle upset. So, to correct for this, pitch down. And once we are at the horizon, we'll roll wings level, recover the airspeed as needed. Let's go. Bank angle. So that's easy, isn't it? Now, let's do that again. Now, the airplane is trimmed pretty tail heavy, so into a pretty strong nose up situation. Let's see if we can recover this just by using the elevator. Okay, we can. But note now that we have to make our aircraft descend quite a bit to pick the airspeed back up. All right. Close your eyes. And open your eyes again. 
In which situation are we? We're in a nose low, high bank upset. And we do have thrust on. So, in this situation it's going to be pretty unavoidable to go into the overspeed. But let's try to make the best out of it. Here we go. Caution. Terrain. 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 Pull up. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Caution. Terrain. Let's do two more of these. Close your eyes, open your eyes. What's the situation? You're right, we're in a simple nose high upset. And this time, we're actually going to roll the airplane to the side to aid in reducing our pitch. Let's go. Bank angle. Bank angle. And be careful when you're pulling the airplane out of your dive that you are not pulling the airplane into an accelerated stall there. You can see how easily the airspeed is actually going to come forward. Alright, one more situation for you. Close your eyes and recover. Low wings level, reduce thrust, speed brake. Terrain, terrain, pull up. Caution, terrain. And we can slowly stow the speed brake. Bring some thrust up again. And that's it. Easy, isn't it? Once you're familiar with the correct procedure. So to recap this. Basically, whenever you have the nose high, the priority is to get the nose down. And if you have insufficient elevator authority available, you can use some elevator nose down trim. And you can roll the airplane to the side in order to aid in getting the airplane's nose down. If you're in a nose low situation, you have two big concerns. That's the speed and the G-loading of the aircraft. So getting the speed under control means reducing the thrust as applicable and extending the speed brake as needed. And getting the G-loadings under control means first of all rolling wings level and then pitching up as needed. And while you're doing that, be careful not to actually cause a stall by increasing your wing loading too much. Also be very careful not just to aggressively pull up, because at high speeds if you pull fully on the elevator you can be very sure that you are going to exceed the airplane's structural load limit. Alright, that shall conclude this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.